No, I am not a rock star, and I don't think it is some kind of rock star fantasy that I have, but if you want to believe that, you're willing to believe that. Shut the door all the way. My goodness. That was the um, slowest door shut I've ever heard in my life. But it is what it is. Anyway, welcome to another episode of Confessions of an ENTP. And today we're going to be discussing TI parent, or more accurately, TI teenager, when it comes to uh, questions or assumptions. This, this particular topic is um, a little bit interesting because it's one of the weaknesses of a TI user. And I've talked about this topic before, but I kind of want to go a little bit deeper on it to kind of just show the difference between TI parent and TI teenager but also to serve as a warning to all TI users out there and to probably give a leg up to the FI users out there who struggle with uh, TI users in their lives consistently. And uh, <laughs> that, and that, and that probably is especially if those people are TPs, to be honest, but uh, it's not to say that FJs as uh, TI users, uh, you know, don't necessarily you know, struggle with this too in some capacity, but uh, it's uh, not a thing. So, but yeah. All right. Uh, um, uh, and Tanya, that's an odd statement coming from you because I thought you were unemployed. So I, I don't know what's what's happening there. How's it hanging, Hero? Uh, so. All right, um, awesome, I guess, cool. Sensei is my favorite INTJ, all right. I, I guess I'll take it, LOL, sure. So uh, let's talk about uh, some of the differences with within you know different TI users before we can actually like go into like the meat of this, but uh, one of the differences, like, what is what is the main difference between TPs and FJs, right? Well, TPs uh, see social norms as something they get to determine. Uh, from their standpoint, harsh truth, harsh reality, harsh facts uh, that they are aware of means that they are the shapers of social norms. So TPs elect themselves the shapers of social norms because they're aware, they're aware of the worst form of truth. Whereas FJs are kind of the opposite, they use pre-established social norms ahead of time to actually determine their thinking, which can land them at risk of being a sheep because they oftentimes adhere to social norms uh, first and foremost, because from their point of view, if it's not socially accepted, then how could it be true? Or how could something be true if it's not socially acceptable? Because FJs seem to put in a lot more faith in people than they should, a lot more faith in society than they should because FJs like to believe that uh, society or at least the majority can agree on something that is true and if the majority agrees on it it's more likely to be true but that's that's actually a hundred percent that's it's completely false that is that is a completely false premise although the FPs out there as well as TJs the FI users really struggle with people like me because me being a TP, it's like, okay, yeah, I'm a TP, I determine social norms. I basically decide what is socially acceptable and what isn't because I have TI parent and TI hero. But then again, all of the TJs and the FPs like to accuse me of being arrogant for thinking so. But it has nothing to do with arrogance. It has everything to do with accuracy at the end of the day. Because TI parent and TI hero yeah, sure, there's a little bit of pride there. Yeah, sure, they could be arrogant. No one's disputing that. But regardless of how arrogant they come off and regardless of how conceited they come off or prideful they came off, they're still more right than everybody else. They're still more correct. They're still more accurate than everybody else, which means they still get to shape social norms around them. And whereas FJs, they're the people who adopt social norms and enforce social norms because they allow those social norms to first determine their thinking. And I find this absolutely 
annoying that uh, people just can't accept that TPs get to shape social norms, whereas FJs get to use social norms. And it's not until FJs actually take the time to explore their TP subconscious do they finally allow themselves 20, 30, 40 years later in their life to actually start shaping social norms because they realized how much social norms have betrayed them or bullshit them the entire time. And it's really frustrating. So it's, 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 it's crazy. Uh, but, you know, TI users are not without their flaws, of course. They're not without their flaws. And uh, one area that FI users uh, can uh, challenge TI users on is in the area of assumption, right? Uh, because oftentimes TI users themselves, especially TPs, don't really make themselves approachable enough uh, to invite people to ask why, to ask why uh, they uh, are shaping the social norms that they're shaping or why they think what they think. And it's kind of interesting because uh, there's, a, there's a friend of mine uh, who I do some uh, coaching with, and he's an individual who um, some would say is intimidated by me. He's, he's intimidated. And because he's intimidated by me, he's not willing to really be his real self with me due to said intimidation, right? Now, granted, there is an aspect of that being his fault for being intimidated by me, but there's also an aspect where it's my fault for him being intimidated by me. But it's very easy for people to be intimidated by expert sensing demon, especially SE demon combined with TI parent. This is an issue ENTPs end up having consistently throughout their lives, like very consistently, uh, where we find ourselves completely unaccepted by society because uh, our TI parent is not accepted because no one can handle the harsh truth that we say, and then we end up becoming the social outcast or this pariah. And then we also have experted sensing demon at the same time, consistently making everybody around us uncomfortable and the like. And this ultimately blows up on our face. It causes us to become these outcasts, these pariahs, etc. It leads to people like Adolf Hitler existing because he's an ENTP um, because of, you know, social norms or society itself actually being completely and totally screwed up, right? And that can, uh, that can definitely be a thing. And no, I don't really care about money that much. Um, that's the one thing about like being an ENP. You can tell the good ENPs from the bad ENPs or the more mature ENPs from the immature ENPs if they have this point of view of, hey, I, I'm very content with very little. And for me, I, I, am, I am very content with very little. I try to go out of my way to not own things if I can avoid it. Uh, that would be my preference. And this is why I have no problem li 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 living out of a car if I have to. I, I have no issue living out of a car and um, would have no problem thereof, etc. No, I never said Hitler was an INFJ. Never one time. And if I did, it was because uh, I was temporarily going along with what the majority was saying at that point in time. And it probably was just me saying this is what people believe about him, but not what I believe about him. I've never actually ever believed he was an INFJ. No, their battle rap analyst Hitler was not an INFJ. And don't be one of those people that are allowing colloquialisms or the majority determine your thinking it's not accurate so like seriously it's it's not a thing so thank you diamond much appreciated for backing me up there like yeah hitler is not an infj so like maybe personality hackers said that maybe dave powers said that i don't know do your own research read mein kampf like it's not that hard to figure out that he was a crusader type really hell-bent on fairness the entire um the entire like world war ii was literally a war of revenge a war of justice a war of of fairness it was the germans exacting out justice against other people granted they took it too far but they still felt justified that their war was just okay and if you don't know why, perhaps you should study the Weimar Republic. You should study 
the Treaty of Versailles, you should study World War I, you should study the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand, you should study the allies of Austria, and you should study the history of the Axis powers, and you will come to realize the truth. But, you know, we don't have time for that in this society, that's for sure. What music do you listen to, Chase? Um, a lot of different... Uh, I'm listening to Asketa a lot these days. Okay. Um, yeah, Michelle, he's an INTP. So, like, I don't know I don't know what else to tell you. Like, that's just reality. Um, so, yeah. And sure, justice and revenge can be taken too far. I mean, we explored this yesterday in uh, the uh, second to last episode for season uh, 29, which is How to Master Your Demon, which is available in the members area. We talked about How to Master Your Demon SI. We also talked about How to Master Your Demon FI this last month. I highly... Uh, recommend you guys check that out in the members area if you haven't yet but the point is ti users end up having this problem after a while where they can be so intimidating especially tps that fi users either don't feel safe don't feel comfortable or don't even want to bother engaging the ti user because typically te users like to ask uh TI users why or how they have arrived to their thinking. It's because they want to be able to mine out that information out from other people. The problem is, is that, uh, you know, or, and, well, it's not really a problem, but another, the other the other side of the coin is, is that, like, all TI users, including ENTPs, they want to be asked what they think, right? Because we'll make statements all the time, but no one bothers actually asking why we think or how we actually came to our conclusions. It's really, really frustrating. And this creates, this creates a, this actually, you know, uh, if the TE user doesn't have the guts to ask an intimidating TP, like what they think, this actually causes the TP to be at risk of an echo chamber, but it also causes the TE user to also be at risk of ignorance. Granted, uh, it's also the TI user's responsibility to invite criticism, to invite questioning. Because if they don't invite questioning, then that person is is arrogant. That person is creating an echo chamber. That person is creating ignorance. And they probably shouldn't even be a TI user at that point anymore because, well, guess what? They're part of the problem. The thing is, though, is that sometimes FI users get entitled to that questioning and questioning in the format in which they choose because they're attempting to um, uh, publicly shame uh, TI users uh, for their thoughts, hoping to you know set them up for a gotcha situation. So there's something to be said about FI users showing respect to TI users and asking TI users what they think in private, right? And that's not something that always uh, happens uh, at times. So, okay. Uh, so, um, at times though, you can't really you can't really convince an ENTP, uh, literally Derek, uh, to stop being intimidating. Being intimidating is just something that is by default a part of our nature. We can't really escape it. We can't really escape it. But at the end of the day, you know, we have to be responsible for what we think and we gotta stop being a TI teenager and make sure that we are being responsible parent. So what is what is TI teenager and how does it work? Well, we've been exploring in season 18 something known as the battlegrounds. And uh, the battleground of responsibility is how a person uses uh, TI parent versus TI or versus uh, FI trickster. And uh, if the parent is leading and it's being a parent, it's being responsible, it will lead with truth, it will lead with facts, it will lead with logic, it will invite criticism, it will, uh, it will uh, invite people to ask them questions about what they think after a while. TI teenager won't do this, and instead, uh, TI teenager will actually lead with FI trickster, and it will start the conversation out with what they, how they feel about certain things or certain feelings that they've developed over time and some of their emotional investments, their emotional ego investments, etc. And that's not exactly the best and that's not exactly ideal because that too can be really intimidating because you speak with the uh, confidence and assuredness and surety of a TI parent, but you're actually communicating through an FI trickster and that can be problematic.
So already your premise could be incorrect because you're already speaking from an FI trickster, but you have the reputation of being intimidating anyway as the pariah like ENTP, and no one's going to bother asking you questions, even if you get to the point where you are inviting people to criticizing you and inviting uh, questioning, etc., which can also be a problem. This is basically an ENTP deciding to, um, gosh, what's the... Um, they're like enabling themselves, enabling their own ignorance, etc. Um, would you say that NTPs have it the hardest to adapt to modern Western world? Yes, because our ideas and TI views are against the known affiliative. Yes, yes, Amartaj, I would. Uh, so, okay. Uh, don't spam the chat you get banned. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Got to love people uh get banned. Good times. Got to love that, I guess. Oh well. Anyone else like to get banned today? <laughs> Ridiculous. Ridiculous. <sighs> okay. Will be hidden. Whatever. Gotta gotta love bots, I guess. <laughs> Times. Got a lot of bot, bot spam today. That's cute. That's real cute. We might go to like a um, members only uh, chat system in the future. So. Let's see here. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, anyway, from a TI from from a TI teenager standpoint, like you really have to go out of your way to be extra responsible and you have to spend time verifying. Like when people criticize me, it's, it's really important. Like it's super important uh, that, well, you being a TI user, they make their points and you have to like stop yourself and just be like, okay, well, hold on. Are they actually correct? Do you as an ENTP have, um, what's it called? The, um, do, you have, do you have the self-discipline to actually just stop yourself from having that emotional FI trickster reaction and just be like, hey, you know, how, how do we actually deal with this? How do we get to the point where it's like, you know, what's most important? Where are we going to come from? How is this going to work, et cetera? Has anyone like gone out of their way to make sure that I'm not going to jump to a conclusion? I'm not going to lead with my emotions. I'm actually going to listen to what this person has to say and verify for myself if their criticism of me is accurate is actually accurate. And a lot of people just don't even do that. They they can't for some reason, and it gets it gets really frustrating, um, you know. And and I. I didn't do that for a long time. For like the longest time, I actually had this default emotional reaction to what people were saying because it was like, I was like leading with FI or FE child and just be like, oh, how could you say that, et cetera. And it's not, uh, you know, it's not, it's not a good thing. It's not accurate. It's not uh, helpful, et cetera. Uh, and a lot of people just don't even, they just don't even get it. Uh, one second. Uh, okay, cool. All right. 
<clears throat> Can't do that if they're just bots uh, spamming. Gotta love bot spam, right? So. Anyway. So yeah, like, TI teenager is 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 a big problem, and TI teenager is literally this this issue. Who, um, you know, they're the people who are going to lead with their emotions first. They're not actually going to stop and think for a minute. Hey, that person might actually write. And I mean, it's even biblical. It's biblical because, uh, you know, a, a wise man will love you if you correct him. Right. That's that's a very paraphrased quote, um, but it's it's definitely it's definitely a thing that can be a problem. Uh, how does an INFJ, like, guys, it's not, it's not relevant, so. Yay, a mod showed up. <laughs> it's hard for me to uh, mod everything myself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, so the, the point is, is that like, in order for TI teenager to actually develop properly the TI parent, which is something that you don't really see amongst very many ENTPs because ENTPs are at risk of being depraved, we have introverted sensing inferior, and we just get stuck uh, oftentimes uh, in our own in our own approach in our own way of doing things and that can be a serious problem a very serious problem and it doesn't um, it doesn't get there so like it's you just have to make sure you have to make sure that you're on the path to growth and the only way to do that is really listening you have to listen and the thing is is that even if you've made a lot of statements you're always at risk of making assumptions always always at risk of making assumptions as an ENTP, and you have to practice active listening. But active listening is not just like that whole, ooh, look in their eyes and nod and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, it's not that. Active listening is actually you're taking action as a result of what you're hearing, and you're actually focused on engagement. In order for you to have proper discourse as an ENTP, right, it is your responsibility with TI Parent, because TI Parent is responsible, it is your responsibility to actually consider their points. And this is why, you know, a TI parent will use the Socratic method, but TI teenager will just use virtue signaling as, as part of its argument. And it's, it, and the, or, they'll, uh, or they'll do too, way too many appeals to pathos or appeals to, to, to ethos or logical fallacy here or there. And it's because it's just a low quality TI parent situation. And, uh, you know, and that's and that's not really uh, that's not really appropriate or ideal for most people. So that can continue to be a problem. And when you're an ENTP, like you have to make sure you're going out of your way to avoid that behavior. Otherwise, you're going to start making assumptions. You're going to start uh, disrespecting people. People are going to disrespect you. And you have to be willing to question yourself by inviting questioning from other people. Because remember, you're a TI user, you're still processing information. If you're not inviting input, or if people are too intimidated by you to share their input, how is it you know for a fact that you're correct with what you're saying because there's, no, there's been no provided input? Your input could be outdated. And this is one of the areas where, you know, TI can be really, really prideful is because that input is completely outdated. And TI teenager allows themselves to make decisions based on old information. And information changes on a day-to-day -day basis. A TI parent would understand, a responsible TI parent would understand that it is absolutely critical. Um, It's absolutely it, it, it's absolutely critical to get them to the point where it's like okay hey yeah we need this we I need additional input so that the your introverted sensing sees it as a need basically that's required you know and the thing is too like 
everyone accuses me of making assumptions and whatnot, but like I'm also asking people for input on a consistent basis. I don't always do it. I'm definitely at risk of making mistakes with my TI parent too. It happens. I am only human after all. But the thing is though, is that when you have like a young 19, 20 year old ENTP who's leading with their FI trickster due to the battleground of responsibility being irresponsible, the irresponsible trickster, uh, instead of their um, responsible parent, you end up getting this really dumbed down teenager, irresponsible uh, parent basically who is not verifying anything and you just sound like a a pompous idiot. You sound like somebody who actually doesn't know what you're talking about and you're not actually helping anyone even though you're imagining to yourself that you are helping people. And that's also a never never problem. So yeah, keep, keep it on topic guys. I'm just going to ignore you if it's not on topic. So just keep that, keep that in mind. So yeah, um, this is one of the reasons or how ENTPs often end up feeling like social outcasts to begin with. But the thing is, is that it's not necessarily society, it's actually their own damn fault. It's their own damn fault. They need to conduct themselves in a way that they know that they are going to be intimidating to other people. So they have to consistently invite question in questioning and invite criticism and invite the other opinions and invite input. If they don't initiate, if they don't initiate, I mean, yeah, sure, ENTPs, I know that you want to feel wanted and you have any hero and it's really nice when other people come to you and ask you, you know, what you think because it makes you feel wanted, but it's not about how you feel. It really isn't. If you're going to be making statements, if you're going to be talking facts or whatever, or what you imagine to be facts, etc., in terms of your ego investments, you still have to take responsibility, invite questioning, invite criticism, invite input from other people. And if you're not willing to do that, well, then you have a serious issue. And one of the things that causes ENTPs to struggle in this area is, you know, their TE critic. TE critic makes it very difficult for them to listen to other people because they're already by default very jaded about other people's thinking, other people's questions, other people's criticism, other people's statistics, what other people know. So, and that is basically being senile. It's very, it's when their their critic is very senile. In order for their critic to be wise, they need to actually be willing to hear out other people point of view because then at a minimum they're verifying that their TI point of view is actually correct. Because if their TI point of view is not being limited by any in any shape or form, then that's uh, that's going to be um, uh, what are you talking about? You lack on respect? What does that mean? Lacking on respect? You mean lack in respect? Like, what does that mean? So anyway, the point is, is that uh, you gotta, you gotta make sure, you gotta make sure um, that people, I mean, you're not, you're not the only thinker in the world, you know, like that, that really is arrogance. You know, you have to verify that your thinking is correct. And just because your thinking is correct one day does not necessarily mean it's always going to be correct. And I think that's one of the main reasons why TE TE child exists, for example, or even TE hero, because they're aware, especially when they're like philosopher types, like ENFPs and ESTJs just really understand that like, hey, you know, if, If you're not going to be going out of your way, if you're not going to be going out of your way to at least listen and consider, then what good are you? Because they already understand that. And they know that, you know, with their FI, they don't value that to begin with. They have FI parent and uh, FI inferior. They already know that they're not going to value your point of view or value your perspective, which means they're going to continue to keep their head in the sand. They're not listening and they're not learning anything. They're just going to turn you off because you're not bothering to ask them anything. You're not bothering to ask them any questions. And that's a huge issue, you know? So you you gotta eat, you know, I I don't know why people are talking about narcissism in the chat right now. Um, So how do we respectfully criticize ENTPs? Well, just share with them what you value and why you value it, et cetera. 
they may debunk what you value and that's fine and be open to that but it's also important to understand um much appreciated luminia thank you very much uh or luminia um i think so yeah but keep that in mind like if you don't if you're not willing to take the criticism or the questions or, or listening to that, even sometimes there can be some really ridiculous questions, then why are you even bothering to speak to begin with? You know, you can't make statements because if you don't do this, you're gonna be in a worse position just making assumptions and making assumptions about people, making assumptions about your family, making assumptions about your friends, and you're just gonna be a really terrible ENTP that deserves to be a social outcast, that deserves to be a pariah. Because yeah, while you are right about a lot of things, even Socrates, one of the most famous, if not the most famous ENTP in the history of the world, he even said, the only thing I really know is that I know nothing. If you can't have that know nothing attitude, if you really can't have that know nothing attitude, then what, what makes you think you're gonna be better than Socrates? So you really don't actually know a damn thing. That's the point. And you have to be willing to invite that criticism and invite those questions. Yes, you're intimidating. Get over yourself. You will always be intimidating your whole life. And sometimes that's kind of part of the intrigue of an ENTP. And that can also be what makes them attractive, especially to the opposite sex. But you know you still are intimidating. You know you are the social outcast. You know you're the prior. Still your responsibility via TI parent to at least seek questioning and seek criticism and seek input from other people. Otherwise, you're allowing yourself to create an echo chamber in your own head. And then as a result of that, you're gonna make more assumptions and anything that you're trying to help with your effy child is basically an absolute waste of time. So, yeah, and as Levi Sanchez says in the chat, um, you know, this is an example of humility. And yes, it is an example of humility. You know, in order for a TI parent to be a parent, you have to humble yourself enough to realize that the only thing you truly know is that you don't know anything, right? So that's the point. That's where this comes from. All right, so it's a little bit of a shorter um a little bit of a, a shorter confessions of an ENTP though but like people uh, does ENTPs question fashion norms with TI parent um, um, ah, I missed that message already the chat moved a little too quick INTJ dating ENTP in his comfort zone getting disinterested long distance any tips uh, break up with them if it's long distance. That's ridiculous. Find somebody else. Don't invest in long distance relationships. You're just wasting your time. So, so Tanya says, from personal experience, TI users have a hard time listening to others. Also, TI users have a hard time taking in how TE users communicate. TE users mean what they say. Not, no, they don't. TE users are just trying to look a certain way for the most part. Uh, they don't always mean what they say. They may mean their feelings, but their feelings may not actually mean much. So that's not so true. However, what is true, TI users typically do have a hard time listening to others, and TE users have an easier time listening to others. That's that's very that's very typical. It's so funny though because you could see um, TE demon of a TI inferior just by default not listen to anybody, and they are that walking echo chamber especially since they use social norms to determine their thinking all the time, and yet they believe they're the smartest person around, and they aren't. That's a serious issue. That's not, that's not going to, to work, you know, as a result. Uh, TE can be easily explained as you're aware of what other people are thinking around you collectively. That's, that's what it is. You just know what other people are thinking. It's like um, telepathy. Uh, that's a great question. So Vinicus Matt asks, what if we ask for input, but people won't give us that? Uh, well, the thing is, is that people, <laughs> if they're used to you being intimidating for a long time and you didn't ask them 
ask for their imp input in the past. Why are they going to volunteer to give it to you now? Like time has passed. So you're just gonna have to change your social circle. You're just gonna have to change people. And they're gonna judge you that way potentially for the rest of your life. It would be best to move on, honestly. Okay. Um, yeah, sure, it's all good. Um, do TI users or TU users have a hard time crushing their ego investments? Uh, not, uh, not always. Not always. Uh, Stellar Memer, not always. I think I think everyone has a hard time crushing their ego investments because the ego investment could be a perception investment with an introverted function, or it could be an introverted judging function. That could also be a uh, a perception uh, as well. So, not necessarily the same. Not really. So yeah. Um, thank you to the mods for taking out the uh, spammers. I think TI parent is to is essential to every society in order to grow and not get burned in its own arrogant, ignorant. The majority prefer old beliefs, the ideas that can be toxic and harmful to them and others. Yeah, definitely. It's certainly necessary, but TI parent is completely useless if they're not inviting criticism, if they're not inviting questioning, if they're not inviting input from other people. And that's on a daily basis. They have to. And if they're not doing that, then it, then it's useless because then they're just presumptuous, assumptuous, um, and they end up presuming too much. And that's it, it's it's actually a form of mental prejudice if you think about it. It's te critic being mentally prejudiced against other people, literally prejudging others as stupid and electing themselves as the only knower, which is completely the opposite of uh, what Socrates was trying to achieve when it came to fleshing out um, uh, discourse and the process of discourse, proper discourse. Okay. Um, do you think ENTPs are good comedians? I have questions, but in the middle of the night, if you're up next time, have fun. Yeah, sure, all good. Why are distant, long distant relationships bad? Because they're buffers, that's why. Because if you're a self-respecting man, and you're not, you know, like, sure, have long distance relationships, but you better make sure that you have girls that you're banging right near you uh, at the same time. So, like, yeah, because if you're not, if you're not doing that, you're, then you're not a man, basically. So, like, if you have long distance relationships and you're a man, but you're not banging local chicks at the same time, you're not a man. Like, I don't, I don't know how else, I don't know how else to explain it. That, that's, that's true. So, that's reality. So, yeah. Thank you, Kyle Herrera. Um, yeah, and, and Jawa D. Yeah, exactly. It's just it's just an attachment. It doesn't really it doesn't really mean you know that much. There's just not much meaning there. Meaning is really everything. Yes, INFJ and INTP can make a good couple. Anyway, this uh, this uh, episode of Confessions of the INTP like got completely derailed by questions but regardless i think i've i think i've made my point so um i might live stream tonight with season 31 episode 4 um we're gonna be talking about gender equality and how it's a myth uh, for the 16 types and we're going to be inviting um members uh paid members uh to join me during the stream and actually share their opinions about uh, gender equality in the 16 types so uh, look for that post in the members area at csjoseph.life forward slash portal uh, for the journeyman uh, membership that's coming as well. And uh, the moral of TI Teenager, have you not been listening, Tanya? I, I've been saying it this whole time. Ask for questioning, ask for criticism, ask for input, and you won't be a TI Teenager. It's not going to be an issue. Looks like my son's decided to start making a lot of noise, even though I'm live, so... Anyway, folks, um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys uh, tonight.